It's time to decide who are really lobsters. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and in this installment of Versus, we're comparing two iconic sitcom couples, Monica and Chandler versus Ross and Rachel. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this showdown, we're considering a variety of different aspects of these couples' relationships, and we'll try to pick a winner. Round 1. Stability There were will-they or won't-they couples that came before Ross and Rachel and many that came after, but many consider them to be the epitome of this sitcom trope. Oh my god, I love Ross, I hate Ross, I love Ross, I hate Ross! <laughs> the amount of time these two are actually in a stable relationship with each other is surprisingly short, and the writers instead favored a constant back and forth that kept audiences on their toes, waiting to see what would happen next. It took them forever to actually get together. And then when they did, there was serious conflict almost right from the start. Is this about Mark? <gasps> oh my god. Okay, it's not. It's oh my god. <laughs> I cannot keep having the same fight over and over again, Ross. No, you're, you're, you're making this too hard. Oh, I'm, I'm making this too hard. Okay, what do you want me to do? It's safe to say these two are anything but stable. You know, I can't believe I even thought of getting back together with you. We are so over. Fine by me! <laughs> Monica and Chandler, however, are pretty much the polar opposite. They first slept together at the end of season four, which was as much of a shock to viewers as it was to them. Well, I've, I've never done that with you before. <laughs> Over the course of the next season, they entered into a serious relationship, and from then on, they stuck together through thick and thin. We're moving to Tulsa. What? Shh. <laughs> When Chandler accidentally took a job in Tulsa, they made long distance work. And when they suffered from fertility problems, their relationship got even stronger. We're gonna, we're gonna figure this out. I know. There's no question here. The point for stability has to go to Chandler and Monica. Winner, Monica and Chandler. Round two, romance. Despite the tumultuous nature of their relationship, or maybe because of it, Ross and Rachel were part of the majority of the show's most romantic moments. Be it their first big kiss at Central Perk or their kiss after Rachel sees the prom video, these two can just make your heart swell. Perhaps because viewers were never sure where this relationship was headed, they wanted to see them get together even more. They were both all about the big romantic gestures, taking turns showing up at the airport to make a declaration of love. Please, please stay with me. I am so in love with you. Please don't go. While Monica and Chandler may have had a little less of a storybook romance, their relationship wasn't without passionate or sentimental moments. I love you, Monica. I love you too, Chandler. In fact, their joint proposal stands out as one of the most emotionally effective things the show ever did. You make me happier than I ever thought I could be. <laughs> and if you let me, I will spend the rest of my life trying to make you feel the same way. <laughs> Despite that, though, they have a lot more humor in their relationship on a day-to-day -day basis than romance. You are so great, I love you. Whether Monica is putting a turkey on her head to say I'm sorry or trying to seduce Chandler while she's sick, we get more laughs than awes from these two. Also, you can't forget about the whole jellyfish incident. Ew! <laughs> you can't say that! You, you don't know! This is a slightly tighter race, but we're sure you'd agree that this point should go to Ross and Rachel. Winner, Ross and Rachel. See? He's her lobster. <laughs> Round 3. Friendship Out of all the friends on this show, we would argue that Ross and Rachel have one of the weakest friendships. When they were younger and went to high school together, Rachel was dismissive of Ross, to the point that he became a member of the I Hate Rachel Green Club. So you were in an I Hate Rachel Club? Yes, he was. No, no. <laughs> Ross always had a big crush on Rachel, and from the very beginning of season one, all of his interactions with her were colored by those feelings. All of the nice guy things he did for her when she was finding her footing in the city were because he wanted to date her, not because he wanted to be a good friend. <sighs> See, I see uh, big passion in your future. Really? Hmm. You do? I do. Oh, Ross, you're so great. <laughs>
Monica and Chandler, on the other hand, have been great buddies since we were introduced to them on the show. Sure, they had a rocky beginning when they first met, but as adults, they're great friends who are there for each other no matter what. You are one of my favorite people and the most beautiful woman I've ever known in real life. Monica offers emotional support to Chandler after his breakups, trying to help him get into shape and even teaching him about the female erogenous zones. <laughs> Even before they started dating, they joked about getting married one day, hinting at what was to come. When we're 40, if neither of us are married, what do you say you and I get together and have one? Why won't I be married when I'm 40? There isn't much of a debate here. Monica and Chandler's friendship is based on caring for one another platonically, while Ross and Rachel's almost always has other motives. Winner, Monica and Chandler. <laughs> There's the man I married. <laughs> Round four how iconic they are. There is no denying that Ross and Rachel are one of the most memorable couples in TV history. I, Ross. I, Ross. Take thee, Emily. Take thee, Rachel. Intricacies of their relationship aside, the show was often fueled by the audience's desire to see if these two would end up together or not. I don't know, I don't know. Look, oh, maybe we should just take a break. Okay, okay, fine, you're right. Let's, uh, let's take a break, let's cool off, okay? Let's get some frozen yogurt or something. Some of the show's most emblematic moments were about their relationship, be it their break, Ross saying Rachel's name at the altar, Phoebe saying they're each other's lobsters, or Rachel finally getting off the plane. If there was one romance that kept friends going, it was this one. Did she get off the plane? Did she get off the plane? I got off the plane. Viewers may not have been expecting another major couple to emerge to rival Ross and Rachel's storyline, but that's where we found ourselves after season four. While Ross is trying to patch things up with Emily, Monica and Chandler's relationship is building and is front and center in every episode. In the latter half of the series, there was much more of a focus on these two than their predecessors. That being said though, one would argue that friends went downhill after a certain point, let's say season eight. And so, most of the show's best and beloved episodes happened much earlier. I love you. Any surprises that come our way, it's okay because I will always love you. While Monica and Chandler definitely come in a close second, there really isn't a question that Ross and Rachel are the show's most iconic couple. Winner, Ross and Rachel. It's you and me, all right? This is it. This is it. Unless we're on a break. Round five, compatibility. While Ross and Rachel definitely have strong feelings for each other, their relationship is based on this mutual affection more so than any actual compatibility. These babies will get you into all the paleontology lectures and seminars. Do you have anything that will get us out of them? When Ross makes the infamous list comparing Julie and Rachel, he lays it all out on the line. He has disdain for the fact that Rachel is just a waitress and calls her kinda ditzy. Just a waitress? Now that, that was, uh, I mean, as opposed to, uh, the, um, okay, is, is this over yet? Ross is a self-proclaimed intellectual who puts high importance on his scholarly pursuits, while Rachel later works in the fashion world. They don't really see eye to eye when it comes to issues in their relationship, with Ross needing more attention and often letting his jealousy get in the way. I mean, I don't feel like I even have a girlfriend anymore, Rachel. Oh, Ross, what do you want from me? You want me, you want me to quit my job so you can feel like you have a girlfriend? No, but it would be nice if you'd realize that it's just a job. Just a job? Monica and Chandler are just as different as Ross and Rachel. Monica has a typical type A personality, valuing order, tidiness, and organization. What if there's no room for a ribbon drawer because the baby stuff takes up all the space? Where will all the ribbons go? Chandler couldn't be more type B. It has little ambition and tends to be messy. Despite this though, Monica and Chandler have a more functional opposites attract dynamic, and they come together and compromise over their differences. Call it even? Okay. <laughs> Chandler helps Monica relax a little, and Monica helps Chandler get his life in order. Okay, I have looked through a bunch of career guides, photocopied and highlighted key passages, and put them into alphabetical folders so you can make an informed decision. <laughs> How long was I in there? Ultimately, neither of these couples actually have much in common. But of the two, Monica and Chandler use their differences to their advantage, while Ross and Rachel's incompatibilities are often the root of their issues. Winner, Monica and Chandler. That means Monica and Chandler take this one.
Which couple do you like more? Be sure to debate it in the comments. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Ms. Mojo for more divisive versus battles.